Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, February 18th, 2015, and this is episode seven of the Sarah Nova Crafts podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. I'm your host. Um, I can be found as Sarah Nova on Ravelry and Twitter and Sarah Nova underscore Phoenix on Instagram. And you can find my blog with the show notes at myknittinglife.wordpress.com. All right, now I guess it's time to get into it. Got to pull my show notes back up here. Um, unfortunately, again, there's not much progress this week. I think I've almost adjusted to my work schedule, but things are still a little hectic. Um, I did get sewing, as you can see by the fact that the sewing machine is out and sitting there. But I had to stop last night because things were going along really smoothly. And I got, you know, a bunch of... Sorry, I have the squares right here in front of me. I got a bunch of the squares done, right? And I got all of these done, right? I got all of these. There's two more. <laughs> if I can unfold it. There we go. I don't have an iron either, so that doesn't help. Um, I got all of these done. And then what happens? My sewing machine stops working. And I completely mangle. I'm gonna have to see if I can't, if this, what I have in scraps, I can't get two more triangles out of because it completely mangled the corner of this triangle. I don't know if you can see that. You can probably see how mangled it is even without it focusing. But um, yeah, for some reason my sewing machine decided that it was no longer going to work. And I even took apart um, the whole thing underneath. Like I took the bobbin out. I made sure that wasn't tangled. And then I took the, um, I don't even know what they're called, the pieces that the bobbin sits in underneath, I took those out and I made sure they were clean, I made sure there wasn't anything on them, put it all back together, still doesn't work. So I'm kind of stuck at the moment, so hopefully, fingers crossed, if I try this again later, maybe letting the machine sit overnight was a good idea, but I was swearing so badly I had it last night that Kevin kept asking if I was okay because it kept jamming and I kept swearing. <laughs> and so eventually I just had to put it down because I was going to break something. So I have a couple mangled triangles that I need to see if um, I have, I still have all the scraps left over from um, cutting all of this in the first place. So I'm hoping that um, I can get one more triangle of each of these fabrics out of what I have left. Fingers crossed. I haven't actually looked yet because I kind of put it away last night because I couldn't stand it anymore. Um, cause, yeah. Good times. Um, and just, yeah, it was not, that was not fun last night. It just, it, it, it wasn't working. It wasn't fun. I just, oh my God. I was so mad at it last night. And I'm still a little bit upset this morning. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> this quilting travesty of mine needs to, you know, go away. Um, for once, it is not snowing. It's the equivalent of damn cold, <laughs> but it's not snowing. So I think that's something in my favor, at least. Though we're supposed to get snow tonight or tomorrow, so, you know. <sighs> Anyways, yes, but it's not snowing right now. This is the first podcast in three weeks. It was snowing the last two episodes. This is the first time it hasn't been snowing in a while. Um, so I, I'm almost done the um, the the sock I'm test knitting, but I can't show you what it is. Once the pattern's been released, I'll show it to you. And it's supposed to be released in March, so it's not that far away. Um, so once it's been released, I'll show you the sock. But I have. Finish the foot. I've turned the heel because it's a toe up. That's not giving away much. How many so how many toe up socks are there? Really, that's not giving away much. Um, it's toe up, so I finished the foot. I did the heel, and I'm about halfway through the leg, so I should be done in the next day or two, and then I can finally finish my February socks because I have about a week and a half to knit a sock in it to knit basically two socks because I need to do half of a leg on the test knit sock and I need to knit half of one February sock and then the whole second February sock because 
I'm doing this test knit, I haven't really knit on my February socks. I have one February sock, and I only just turned the heel. Oh my god, my hair's like stuck in this. Mm. Um, like just, like I'm working my, like, here's the heel. Alright, heel. And like, that's how much leg I have. It is not a lot of leg. See, heel. That's not a lot of leg. I have like a quarter inch of leg. And I want the leg to be as long as the foot. Yeah. It's a good thing this isn't a pattern and it's just stocking net and I can just sit there and mindlessly do it. No, ever note. I don't want to update right now. Oh my god. Just let me see my show notes. I'll update you later. Sorry. But every time I go to record a podcast, something pops up on my computer screen. I swear to god. It, anyways. Um... Unfortunately, no spinning has been done. Unfortunately, no weaving has been done. I still need to warp the loom. You can see it actually down here. It's leaning up against the closet doors. Yeah, it's right there. Um, <laughs> I haven't warped it yet. Still have the yarn sitting around. However, I did get some goodies in the mail this past week. Um, one of them I bought. One of them I didn't. Um, it was like a gift. Not really a giveaway, but um, Amanda at Not A Podcast she, um, in her episode last week, she was talking about how she was trying to spin some Polworth fiber. And it wasn't agreeing with her. She didn't like it. Totally personal preference thing. But I'll spin just about anything. And she put it out there that whoever contacts her first about the fiber can have it. Free and clear. And I was the first person. Maybe because I watched her podcast at 8 o'clock in the morning the day after it went up. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so... That came in the mail, and she actually sent me a really pretty card. Really cute. Now, I thought I put the card in here. Ah, yes. And she drew on the front, and then the stickers on the back. Really cute. And, um, and she, you know, sent me a, a, it's got a little cute card and everything. Um, you know, and she actually sent me... Oh, it's Romney, not Polworth. Sorry. Oh my god, brain. Um, it's actually Romney. And she actually sent me a second thing, which I completely wasn't expecting, because I knew that this purple stuff was the stuff she'd been talking about. And it just didn't agree with her, and so she was parting with it. And fine by me, great, right? It's actually a really nice purple if I can get my... Can That's fairly accurate, but it's not great. Um... But what I wasn't expecting was her to include this fiber from Hello Yarn, which is a really pretty color. It's called Tideline. Um, let me pull it out so you can see it better. Um, but this is Romney as well, and I guess because she decided she didn't like Romney, she just sent it. So this is really pretty. It's yellows and blues and browns with a little bit of tealy greens in it. Um, and the yellow is almost an, an orange yellow. It's not a real yellow yellow. It's more orangey. So this is really pretty. And I was like so surprised and so happy. And thank you, Amanda. <laughs> I really liked it. It's really good. Um, and I like spinning just about anything. Nothing really disagrees with me. Um, at least from the stuff I've tried. And I've tried a lot of wool breeds at this point. And I have some Romney fiber in my fiber stash. And it hasn't bothered me. So, thank you! <laughs> um, and then the other thing I got in the mail as I close this back up. Um, was... Lisa at 90% Knitting is doing a de-stash, and she had some really nice, um, I can get it out of here, uh, she had some really nice, um, Debbie Bliss Merino DK that she was getting rid of. Now, she originally, um, had 10 skeins of this up in her de-stash, but she apparently couldn't find one when I when I messaged her about getting the 10 skeins. So um, she's like, she would just send me the nine for a cheaper amount. And I'm like, yeah, sure, fine, great, I'll take it. So it's this really nice tealy blue. 
that's actually pretty close to the color. It's a little washed out, but that's actually a really good representation of the color. And it's a DK weight, and it's um, 110 meters to the ball, which, yeah, I don't know what that is in, 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 um, I don't know what that is in yards off the top of my head, but whatever. And, like, I didn't mind getting the 9 skeins versus the 10, because I can still make a sweater out of the 9, um, especially because I only make, like, a smaller or medium-sized sweater. I don't need to make, like, a huge sweater. So, um, I'm totally cool with the 9 skeins, and, you know, she thinks she might have used the 10th ball for something, and I'm just like, whatever, it's cool, no big work, my, no big deal. Ah, uh, so those were the goodies I got. Um, let's see. Uh, I, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's another short show for you this week, because that's all I got. Because like I said, um, I can't show you the test knit sock. Sorry, I'm putting this, the card back in the thing. Um, I can't show you the test knit sock, because that's not released yet. I haven't finished my February socks. I haven't finished the quilt block. I haven't spun. I haven't woven anything. It's just been one of those weeks. And it's, this is the second week it's just been one of those weeks. Um, I am, however, going to the farmer's market this coming weekend in Wayland, Mass. Um, they're doing a second fiber day. And so I'm going down there with my mom and I'll probably run into a few other people I know who have heard about it from me and who are going to go. Um, probably run into them there. Kate from 100 Ravens Yarn, she's going to be there. She's one of the, the people selling. She's got a booth. And um, this is actually, this is, this, my February socks is her yarn. This is Kate's yarn. Want to see your logo? Yeah, because I'm knitting. It's an 100 Ravens bag. Anyways. Um, she does great stuff. I love it. She's the one that took me to Hartford in October. And overall, it's been a blast. Um... And so, but, like, there's a lot of other people there, too. I mean, I saw, I showed you all the stuff I got last time I went. I'm not gonna spend the same amount of money this time, but still, it's, it's gonna, um, be really fun, and my mom and I enjoyed going, and it'll be good. So, I'm excited. And, um, oh, what, 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 what was I? There's one more thing I wanted to say, and it just went right out of my head. Oh! Valentine's Day. Kevin and I's plans went completely out the window because he went to get his car inspected because his birthday's in February. And here in New Hampshire, A, we have inspections. B, the inspections are your birth month. They're not the month you buy the car. They're the birth month of the registered owner of the car. Which means even though my birthday is in November, my mom technically owns my car, so it needs to be inspected in April. But Kevin owns his car, so it needs to be inspected in February. And he went to take it in in the morning. They were booked. He, they couldn't take him right away. So he came back. Then he had to, he, but he had to make an appointment for noon, because that was like the first time they could get to him. So he goes, and by this point I've gotten up, because I slept really late on Saturday. And about 45 minutes later, about an hour, about an hour later after he leaves, he calls me and he's like, can you come get me? Because they're going to need my car for the next like four hours. So even though we had my car to do stuff, um, we were kind of always waiting for his car to be done because we were waiting for the call. So we were going to do dinner out, but instead we did lunch out. And we were going to go see a movie in the afternoon, but instead we saw it after dinner, after we picked up his car. By the way, the movie we saw was Jupiter, is it Ascending or Rising? It's, it's the, the, the Jupiter sci-fi movie. It's... I'm trying to look it up. I think it's Jupiter Ascending, but I might be wrong. No, it is Jupiter Ascending. Okay. Um, just because it looked like a fun movie. It's by the Wachowski Brothers, which who are the same people who made the Matrix Trilogy. Um, and I actually really like the Matrix Trilogy. I mean, there, yeah, there's some certainly unnecessary stuff, like the rave in the second movie was completely unnecessary to the plot, but, because, I mean, it's a rave. <laughs> like, it's a rave. But anyways, there's a few other unnecessary parts, too. But anyways, um, we left the movie with the impression 
that it happened too quickly, that things moved too fast. And Kevin, not knowing it was a, an original Wachowski Brothers script, thought it had been based on a novel, which would have actually made sense because a lot of movie adaptations of books feel like they move very quickly because they're trying to squeeze a whole novel, which is between three and 500 pages or whatever it is. Their novels are long and I like really long ones um, into two, two and a half hours. And there's only so fast you can go and you have to cut stuff. And so Kevin was on the, under the impression it was based on a book. And I'm like, well, actually, no, it was an original script written by the Wachowski brothers. And so it, it wasn't a bad movie. Well, it wasn't bad in terms of, oh, that was a bad movie. It was one of those so bad it's good movies, but it, it wasn't really in that category either because I genuinely enjoyed it for itself. I didn't enjoy it because of the cheesiness. I actually just enjoyed it to enjoy it. I mean, yeah, the world, the not the world because they leave the planet. Um, The universe that they created for this movie um, was... It could have been far more fleshed out. Um, there, I personally would have liked a lot more exposition and a lot more explanation of stuff because if I'm going to watch a sci-fi flick, can we not just have, like, you know, spaceships without some explanation? Like, I mean, if it's sci-fi and it's, like, about the Apollo program, yeah, I, I know how that works. It's not going to bother me. But if we're having, like spaceships that can jump halfway across the universe in about 30 seconds, you're going to have to justify that somehow for me. <laughs> because according to the laws of physics as we know them, it doesn't work. Actually, Star Trek warp drive is theoretically possible. However, the power requirements are so extreme that we might not ever be able to actually obtain it. But it's theoretically possible. But this movie, no explanation, no nothing, just go with it. And it was, I don't want to give away the plot in case people want to see it, even though it's been out for a couple of weeks. How do I explain it? The main character ends up going off planet for a very specific reason. Also bees. Royal T sensing bees. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Go watch the movie. Um, uh, uh, dog human hybrid people. But he looks like an elf because he's got pointy ears. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it harvesting planets. It was an interesting movie. <laughs> I mean, some of it was entertaining. Some of it was genuinely, like, grabbed me. Some of it was, uh, oh, no. But, which any good movie should be. And, and I genuinely enjoyed it. It was fun. It was not a great masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. But it was fun. And I think that's what mattered. And I really enjoyed it. And I got so engrossed, I forgot to eat my popcorn. So I think that says something about the movie. But that was my Valentine's Day. Um, sorry about the, the um, unplanned movie review, but I actually enjoyed the movie. And I we actually got to see it in 3D, which is cool. And the 3D was actually really subtle. It wasn't like in your face. It was actually pretty subtle. Um, but it was fun. It was interesting. I wish they'd expanded. I'm hoping for a novel adaptation of the movie because they do that sometimes, you know, like, like, like when the, um, Men in Black movie came out, they released a novel version for, um, both of the, the, the rebooted Star Trek movies, they've released a novel version of the movie. And I'm hoping they do that with this because there's so much space for expanding the, the, um, in-movie universe to, you know, add explanation and exposition and just expand the scope. And I think that would be really good. So I'm hoping they do a novel adaptation of the movie. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I'm coming up on 20 minutes here. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, you can find me on Ravelry as Sarah Nova, on Twitter as Sarah Nova, on Instagram as Sarah Nova underscore Phoenix. There is a Ravelry group. Please join and comment, say hi. Um, and, uh, and you can find the show notes on my blog at mindinglife.wordpress.com. Thanks, I'll see you next week. Bye!